Hello, and welcome to the Family Meeting Podcast recording. Hey, guys. We're glad you're with us today. Hope you're having a fantastic week, and we are going to hopefully add to it and be a blessing to you. That's our goal and our hope. And uh, Thomas, how's your week been going so far? Pretty good. It's been it's been busy. We've had a lot of church stuff going on. We yeah. had You had a big event Saturday that we set up for Friday and, and prepared all last week with your mother-daughter luncheon, had... 100 plus women and girls at the event. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, then we had church Sunday, of course. Leader uh, Connection group leader training Sunday after church. I don't even remember Monday. Yesterday you had lead team meeting. Just we so- painted yesterday. Or no, Monday we painted. That's right. Painted yeah, Monday. That's what it was. Job, so. so paying the bills. Thomas has recently begun to work for me. Yeah, so he's my boss. Business. So I like that. I get to boss him around. Yeah, so it's pretty much like all of our lives every day it's just now filtered over into business as well pretty much the only place you're not the boss is church stuff yeah or anything like techie i mean yeah yeah he tells me what's happening with the, all the technology in every aspect of our life and I'm other like, than okay. that this is the boss here so it actually works well that i paint for you because you're good at telling me what to do and i'm good at listening yeah we got a thing good thing going here i think i'm gonna I think i'm gonna keep going with you yeah hopefully we'll see so what do y'all got going on? Anything fun this week? Really? That's really fascinating. I've always wanted to try that. Share with us in the comments what's going on in your life. But right now, we got to get to this recording. Episode 137. Okay, here this we go. Year. Gather around, everybody. It's time for a family meeting. The family meeting is a show that's all about family relationships. We're the Oster Camps. I'm Thomas. This is my wife. She is the boss. Babe. (laughs) Beautiful. I've got a lot of words I could use to describe (laughs) you. And you're done. Okay. Uh, Welcome. Hello and welcome to our family. Welcome to episode 137 of the Family Meeting Podcast. We are glad that you are with us today. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about not learning from mistakes. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mistakes are really an opportunity for learning. And uh, I feel like you and I have had lots of opportunities to learn and to grow. So when we talk about learning from mistakes, what's, what would you say is, what, what are some mistakes in marriage and family that you have made, but you're kind of learning from? Or have learned from. So let me say a mistake that I have made repeatedly and did not learn from as quickly as I wish I had would be nagging. And we've talked about that several times on the podcast. But I really, when we first got married, I nagged a lot. And I really didn't feel like I was nagging. All I was doing is like trying to produce, um, I guess, a behavior. I was trying to get you to do something. She was trying to train me. Yeah. That's what it was. I guess so. And I did not learn from that mistake because it never ended well. It always ended with you being defensive or shutting down or like, I don't know. I wonder sometimes if you purposefully didn't do the things I was nagging you about. What do you think? That doesn't sound like me at all. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So now I don't remember doing that, but I'm not going to say I'm above that. Yeah. Well, and I think sometimes that can that kind of behavior can be subconscious. Yeah. Like, oh, if you're just going to keep doing this, then I'm going to do this, which is it's it's a toxic way to respond for yeah. sure. Yeah. Even if the behavior towards you is not good, that it doesn't give you the right to behave in a way that's not that's not good. So so mine, I think the mistake that I wish I would have learned from sooner would be nagging. But um, I don't know. Have I learned from that? Do I nag you now? Very rarely. I would say very rarely. Yeah. I try really hard not to. But uh, there are occasional times and I'm I'm trying to remember when the last time even was. It's been a while where you will bring something up over and over again and I will finally just say, "Please don't talk to me about this anymore." Yeah, it has to get to that point for me to be like, "Oh, oh, okay. Got it." I, yeah, I've yeah. heard that one a few times. But for me as far as learning from mistakes. Yeah, what do you got? I would say probably just learning from a lack of organization Mm. Uh, something as simple as taking out the trash has caused us so much problems for so many years and 
we finally have it solved. And the reason we have it solved is I started using an app on my phone called Things that schedules and helps organize and lists and all those sorts of things. And I'm not an organizer <laughs> by nature No. in most things. I think church work is probably one of the only things where I'm super organized. Yeah. Obviously with the podcast and what we do, there's some organization there. But just in life in general, I've never really applied and tried hard in organization. And I think that uh, for too long I used, I'm just not an organized person as an excuse. Or like, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. And maybe this is some of you out there is like, oh, I'm just not an organized person. This is just kind of how I live my life. Well, that's, you can choose to get organized. There's so much stuff out there to help people like us. So I started using this app and I literally just put trash on a schedule and it repeats every single week we we have our trash comes twice a week and so mondays monday evenings i get the alert to take the trash out and thursday evenings i get the alert to take the trash out and for months i have been faithfully taking yeah. off the trash but it's, it's like awesome. why did it take 20 years <laughs> I don't know. To learn. I'm a slow learner. I know that. But it shouldn't have taken 20 years to, to figure out a system to get me to be able to h handle this responsibility. Here's what I think is interesting. The thing that is your repeated mistake is the thing that made my repeated mistake so much worse. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it was like because I would nag him about the trash and he wouldn't take out the trash. So like literally that is the cycle that we had going for years and years and years. It was there. a vicious cycle. It was terrible. I'm so happy that we're out of that spiral. For now. I don't want to go back. I'm not going back. I will take out the trash myself. At the no, I'm like, what's what's the new thing? <laughs> what's the new trash in our relationship that's causing <laughs> the problems now? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we'll figure that out through this episode as we, we are looking at behaviors. Learning from mistakes. We're learning from mistakes. And not just not just our own mistakes. We should learn from our own mistakes. But, yeah. but we really want to highlight learning from all mistakes. And right. it's better. It's good to learn from our own mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that is the best way to learn as far as making it stick. But. Man, if we can if if we can learn from other people's mistakes and not have to make them, that is so much better for all of us. Well, and that's one reason we podcast because we want to share with you the mistakes we've made and try to use them as warnings for you and your marriage. We want to share with you the mistakes we've made in parenting. Sometimes um, what we're sharing is things that we have um, encountered through counseling other couples um, through their parenting mistakes and their marriage mistakes. And then we want to share those things with you without giving names or anything like that. But just so that all of us can be warned and can learn from other people's mistakes. We don't want to go down that same road that led to that destruction. Yeah. So let's learn from that. You know, that's one reason why we have this family meeting podcast is we want to help you and we want to help our marriage too to be strong and, and to learn from our mistakes and other people's. Well, and I'd say if this podcast has helped no one else, it's been great therapy for us to just to talk <laughs> through things right. and work through things and concentrate on our own marriage and family. Yeah. Um, and we do. We want to learn from our mistakes. But listen, we, we also want to learn from your mistakes. Yeah. So if you have some mistakes that you have made and you say, hey, we, it, we learned this lesson from this mistake, we want to hear from that. Let us know. Um, for those watching on YouTube, put it in the comments. For those who are listening to the podcast, shoot us an email, info at familymeeting.org. Or maybe you're currently like, man, we're in the weeds right now. We're making some mistakes mm -hmm. and we're trying to learn the lessons from it. And so if we want to learn from you, it's not just about you learning from us. This is a community. We really yes. look at this as a family. Mm-hmm. And so if you have some mistakes you have made or are currently making and you want to share that with us and help us learn, we're all about that. And for the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of looking at the life of Abraham and Sarah and seeing their relationship and their family dynamic and trying to learn some lessons from it. And a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the, the mistake that Abraham and Sarah made when they went down to Egypt and they they just used deception and said, "Hey, let's let's go down here. Let's tell them 
Like, you're my sister. Well, Abraham. Yeah, Abraham said that. So that uh, they won't kill me. And Abraham had this great plan. But that's, that's not the only time we, we find them making this mistake. Um, and in Genesis chapter number 20, um, we, we find them continuing the journey because God had told Abraham, hey, I want you to leave the home and the, the area where you grew up, and I'm going to bring you to a land that I'm going to give to you and going to give to your inheritance. I'm going to make you a great nation and all of this stuff. So they're, they're making the journey. And along the way, Genesis chapter number 20 tells us they come to a place called Gerar. And um, once again, Abraham, verse number two, said of Sarah, his wife, she's my sister. So the king of that area, Abimelech, sent and he, he takes Sarah. So you have them repeating the same exact mistake and... It, going back to the first time we looked at this, when this happened in Egypt, it didn't turn out well. Right. And it, it could have been a lot of trouble for Sarah. It could have been a lot of trouble for Abraham himself. Like Pharaoh could have took vengeance, could have killed them both. Um, God protects them and brings them out of it, even though they make they make some bad choices. And aren't, Lysander, aren't you so glad that even when we make some stupid choices, when we sin, when we fail, when we make mistakes, that God is still in control. Yes, I am. Absolutely. And that he still loves us and he still is merciful and gracious because we don't deserve it. We deserve him to be like, yeah, you get what you get. You made your bed, now lie in it. And he's not like that. He's such a good God. He loves us and he cares for us. Now, he wants us to learn from our mistakes. I do believe that. Totally. And, and sometimes we have to go ahead and go through those repercussions and consequences of our mistakes. But at the same time, he's still there in the midst of it. He's still there in the midst of our mess. And he's protecting us. He's watching out for us. He's with us. And I just love that about God. And here Abraham and Sarah are making the same exact mistake in Genesis chapter number 20. They don't learn from the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what they say? And I don't know who exactly said this, but I've heard this phrase a bunch of times. I don't know where it originated. It's not with me. But those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. And that's exactly what we find happening here with Abraham and Sarah. And so Abimelech the king takes Sarah to be his wife. And God comes to him in a dream and says, hey, I'm going to kill you and everybody associated with you because this woman is somebody else's wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Abimelech is having this conversation with God saying, hey, I, you know, I haven't touched her yet. Don't would you kill an innocent person? And God was God was protecting. Mm -hmm. And he says, listen, she, they they told me they both together. Like he said, she's my sister. She said, he's my brother. I I was not willfully doing something wrong when I took her to be my wife. And so God says, hey, uh, you know, if if you don't touch her, you you give her back to her husband and everything's going to be fine. And um, so Abimelech goes and he he goes to find Abraham and has a conversation with him. And remember, Abraham was somebody God had specifically called out to do something special through. He had a relationship with God. So it should have been Abraham that was setting the tone in this place for what character looked like. And that's not the way that it is. And in verse number nine of Genesis chapter number 20, Abimelech goes to Abraham and he says, what have you done to us? And, and this phrase right here, how have I sinned against you that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? Mm -hmm. And he says, you have done to me things that ought not to be done. And, you know, we are, we are Christians and we talk most, a lot of our, listeners are Christians, and um, I just want you to stop and think about those times in your life where you should have been setting the tone, and you should have been setting the example of what a Christian looks like, what a follower of Jesus looks like, what a good husband, a good mm -hmm. father, a good mother, a good wife, a good child looks like, and we've had people outside of the faith have to correct us, mm -hmm. or Maybe this happens. This has happened to me before. 
where as a father, I should be setting the example of what a godly person looks like, but it's, it's sometimes it's my children who are showing me mm. what a godly person looks like. Yeah. Right. Have you ever, have you had that where the girls, you know, maybe it's not, they came and said, mommy, why are you? But with their actions, they showed, Hey, this is a godly, what a godly person looks like when maybe you weren't showing that. Yeah, absolutely. I can't think of a necessarily a specific time, but absolutely. I know that I felt that before where I'm like, oh man, my kids are putting me to shame because they are acting properly when my thought, my thoughts are running wild or I'm not wanting to do the right thing. And here they are. Yeah. I know for me, it's times with my temper mm. where they will often have so much patience and so much grace for me and for other people. Mm hmm. That there's times I'm I'm totally embarrassed as a father of how quickly something dumb can get me angry, whether it's somebody not driving correctly mm -hmm. down the road or whatever else. Yeah. And Abraham, Abraham should have been the one setting the example. Instead of doing that, this king who's outside of this relationship with God comes to him and says, you know, you, you've done something to us that should not be done. And um, he, he asked this question in verse 10. What did you see that you did this thing? Like, what is it about me? <laughs> yeah. What's the reasoning behind it? When you came here and were evaluating, what is it? And this, this is the thing in this whole passage that really jumps out to me. Abraham said, I did it because I thought. Mm -hmm. Right. I thought. Now, there's nothing wrong with thinking. God wants us to think. He yes. wants us to, to, you know, use our minds and all of those sorts of things. The problem is not that... It, the problem is Abraham thought when he should have acted. Mm -hmm. Right. So there was nothing to think about here in this situation. The right thing is always the right thing to do. There's nothing to think about. This is not a situation where we're trying to figure out, hey... Is it wise for me to buy this car, to move to this place, to make this purchase? This is one thing's wrong, one thing's right, you do the right thing. There's nothing to think about. Right. And But he comes to this place, and he's, he's assuming a lot. He says in verse 11, Hey, there's no fear of God at all in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. So he's assuming a lot about Abimelech and the people there. He's assuming a lot about God, man, a lack of faith. God's not going to watch out me. He's, he's not going to protect me, even though God had proven that in Egypt. Um, this reminds me of what you said your dad used to say to you when you would get in trouble. Which time? <laughs> I guess many of them. I don't know. <laughs> because you, you have shared that your dad would say, why'd you do that? What are you thinking? What are you doing? And you would be like, well, I thought. And then he'd go. That's, that's your that's your first problem is you thought. Yeah. <laughs> that's problem number one. I'm thinking my dad said that to my brother. I know my dad never said that to me. I don't think I, I, I've I, heard I, that I, I don't think I, I have ever said that. But I know my yeah. dad said that to me more than once. Yeah. And I, I have heard that phrase before. So I'm wondering if I heard my dad say that to my brother. I think it's like a father son thing. <laughs> yeah. That's and, your first and problem you thought. In some of those situations, he was correct. And it was exactly like the situation here where it's like, this is what I've told you to do. There's no thinking about it. Just do what I told you to do. Right. The, this is the right thing. Just do it. Don't stop and think about whether or not you should do it. It's the right thing. Just go ahead and do it. And that's exactly what happens here. And for some of you who are listening, you already know what it is God wants you to do. And it's time to stop thinking about it. Yep. It's stop, time to stop contemplating and trying to figure things out. Listen, if God has impressed it upon your heart to do something or he specifically told you in his word you to do something there's nothing to think about right and sometimes we we try to convince ourselves that the word we know god has given us is not the word god's given us you know we're trying to convince ourselves no that's not actually what god wants me to do even though you know it is we'll try to reason it out and and trick ourselves maybe because it's scary it's hard it's difficult it's stepping out on a limb or it's uncomfortable but if God has shown you to do something, stop trying to talk yourself out of it and just do it. And then he, he tries to reason it away. Okay, so he's like, hey, I, I thought all this stuff. Um, and then in verse 12, he says, besides, she is indeed my sister, 
the daughter of my father, though, not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And so he, he tries to reason it out by, hey, you know, technically, and this word, this word daughter here, when it talks about sister and daughter, it's not necessarily used as specifically as we use the terms mother and daughter and sister. Like, we look at that as an immediate relative. That word could just mean a daughter. A descendant, so it should could be it could be a more distant relative. Could be a cousin. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> which, I mean, let's just say here on the family meeting, we're not uh, promoting any kind of marriage between siblings. No, in fact, the Bible. You know, we had a we had somebody actually ask me a question about this recently. The Bible is very specific that incest is not okay, and there's more than one verse that literally says that fact. Um, very plain, very clear. Mm -hmm. But for for this. Um, she she could be a more distant relative, and so he's just using this as a reasoning to say, "Hey, I'm not technically lying, but once again, he's he's leaving facts out to deceive." And we've talked about that in the past. Yeah, and don't forget, as you're going through the Bible, just because people did it in the Bible does not mean it is right. Yeah. Um, just because it was okay, okay and acceptable in that culture does not mean that God put his stamp of approval on it. And you think about our culture right now today. There are many things happening that are acceptable in our culture right now that are not okay with God. So just keep that in mind as you're going through the Bible because sometimes those things can be a little confusing and they make you stumble and you're like, wait, what? Is that okay? Yeah. And it's not. But they, they made mistakes. Yeah, they should um, And But they failed to learn from their mistakes in the past. And here they are repeating the same exact thing. Yeah, and here's one thing that I want to point out to everyone. Um, in Genesis 12, Abraham and Sarah, um, they, they did this with Pharaoh, right? They said, she's my sister. Pharaoh took her. Then they didn't learn from that mistake, even though it all fell apart. They didn't learn from it. So here they're doing it again in Genesis uh, 20. Yep. And then this is what I find so interesting. Their son, Isaac, and his wife, Rebecca, do the same thing later on. Yeah. And so a lot of times, if we can't learn from our mistakes, we are going to set examples that our kids are going to follow. And so really think about that. Like, how are you living your life? Because our kids are watching. They see oh, what yeah. we're doing. We are an example to them. And so make sure that you are learning from your mistakes so that your kids don't make the same mistakes and have to learn from them too. And that's and that's a great point. And I think along those lines, um, as parents, because we are going to make mistakes. Absolutely. We're human. As parents, we need to teach our kids and show them an example of what do we do when we make a mistake. Oh, yes. Amen. And I'm like, is, preach it. We own it. We apologize. And we make a commitment not to repeat that same mistake. That's right. Abraham and Sarah don't do that. They continue the same pattern, and so what do they do? They've shown that pattern to their kids, so when they get in that situation, what is their default? Their default is to fall back on the example that they've given. That's not an excuse, right, because we all make our own choices. No matter what my parents did, that's not an excuse for me to repeat the same thing or for you. What? But what I'm pointing out is it makes it easier for our kids to fall back on the default we've shown them. So we want to show them the default that says, hey, when you fail and you're going to fail, own it. Yeah. Don't try to explain it away like Abraham. Don't try to reason it out. Just own it, apologize, and make a commitment. I'm not going to do that again. Yeah, and we try to do that in our family with even, even mistakes that have nothing to do with the kids. So I'm not just talking about, oh, man, I lost my temper on my kids. I made a mistake and I need to apologize. But also when I make a financial decision that is not wise or if I, um, I don't manage my time well and now we're in a bind, I like to take those moments and say, okay, girls, um, the reason that I'm so stressed right now is because last night I watched a movie when I should have been working on this, you know, and just helping them to learn from my mistakes because you know what? I make a lot of mistakes. So there's a lot of opportunities for me to turn those into teaching moments for my children. So, um, so I think that's really good. It's rather than, um, blaming it on someone else or trying to pretend like it's just the way things are. It's not because of a mistake I made. Go ahead and use that as a te teachable moment to your children because you know what? Yeah. Mistakes are easy to make. Oh yeah. You don't even have to try. <laughs> 
all of a sudden you just find yourself in a situation you regret because you chose poorly or you acted foolishly. Your words got away from you, whatever it may be. So we all make mistakes and fail and we all do things and then look back later and say, I can't believe I did that or I can't believe I did that again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? How did I do that again? Yeah, that was so stupid. I did that again. Another week's rolled around and I didn't take the trash out again. How is that possible? Yeah, I wonder the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> But one of the best things that we can do when we make mistakes or fail is to say, what can I learn from this? Because mistakes are a great teacher. Yeah. Trying to never mess up is a fool's errand. Trying to be perfect is impossible. You will mess up and that's okay. But when you mess up, don't miss the opportunity to learn from it. Um, I love what Proverbs 29, 21, uh, 29. Oh my goodness. Can you read? It's really tough to read. I'm working on it. <laughs> Proverbs 21, 29. It says this, a wicked man puts on a bold face, but the upright gives thoughts to his ways. So as you make mistakes, rather than just putting on a bold face and pretending like nothing ever went wrong, look at what you've done. Consider your ways, consider your actions and learn from it. And that's like, exact, it's, it's saying exactly what we we're just talking about. Yeah. Don't just pretend that you didn't make a mistake. Don't try to explain it away. Uh, hey, everything's fine. No, you made a mistake. Own it. And and he talks about the upright giving thought to his ways. Hey, contemplate what you did and learn from it. And I guarantee my girls are so sick and tired of me saying, okay, what can we learn from this situation? Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I do that all the time. You know, they're rushing to turn in an exam or they're panicking to study for something. Or they, um, this was so funny. This just recently happened this last week. Somehow we were heading into a store and Violet only had one shoe. Yeah. We're in the minivan and Violet has one shoe. I'm like, how do you only have one shoe? How did this happen? And she's like, well, when I left from the house, I ran over to, um, Aunt Shelly's who was our neighbor. Shout out to Shelly. Um, and then I was with her and then I didn't know I was getting dropped off here and I decided to only wear, I left my shoes in the van, but then one sister took one shoe out of the van and it was like this whole big thing. And so here we are, we're trying to go into the store and I'm like, what can we learn from this? Yeah. And the, the lesson of course is always have two shoes with you no matter where you're going because you don't know where you're going to end up that day. So always have two shoes, you know, and that's I'm, actually a good lesson. It's a good lesson. But I'm constantly saying that to my girls. What can we learn from this when something goes wrong? And, um, and then I make them talk about it like, okay, well, if I shouldn't have done this or even when other people make, make mistakes. So for instance, um, sometimes their friends will treat them poorly Yeah, and I will say, okay, what can we learn from this? So their friend has made a mistake, treated them unkind and I want them to learn from their friend's mistakes. So what I say, what can we learn from this? And they say that I need to not treat my friends this way. And you know what? I ask this my question, this question to myself all the time. What can I learn from this? Because I make a lot of mistakes, as I've already said. And when I do, I try to ask myself, what can I learn from this? Like, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to get myself into the situation again. So what have I learned from this? And then this is such a good question that we all need to ask. What can God teach me from this? Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What do you want me to learn? Because oftentimes God's trying to teach us a lesson. Yeah. He wants to help us to learn something so we don't make the same mistake again. And as Thomas said, those who don't learn from history are bound to repeat it. So we've got to learn the lesson when the opportunity is there. And it really reminds me of a story your sister was telling us the other night. Um, yeah. Lysander's family is in town for the mother-daughter lunch, and that was Saturday. And... Um, before the the luncheon it was thursday we were having dinner they got just got into town and i don't even know how it happened we got on the conversation of speeding and speeding tickets yeah and your sister was telling the story about i think your dad actually brought it up and threw her under this bus but yeah he was trying to <laughs> he was telling everybody <laughs> she was up going to bible college up in wisconsin at the time and was was driving home to Iowa and she was doing 20 plus over the speed limit and got pulled over. Cop gave her a ticket, like $375. $375. That was like 25 years ago. Yeah. That was a ton of money. That was an expensive fine. Yeah. And um, you, th you would think 
Like you would learn the lesson from that. That's so much money. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Or I'm definitely not going to do that on the same road. But <laughs> what happened? She she got the same thing happen again. The very next trip home. Yep. 20, 20 plus over the speed limit again. Pulled over. Same thing. $375. I mean, you're talking about it's a $750 lesson. Yeah. That's harsh. But the thing is. As 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 high as that dollar amount sounds, it relationally, some of us are paying a lot higher price than that because we're not learning from our mistakes. Yeah, um, we need to learn from our mistakes. And as much as I've given Lenita a, a lot of flack the yes. last few days because you of this these definitely stories, definitely hounded her and teased her over. That um, one. I think about the the price that I've had to pay relationally. Mm. not just in our family, but with other people, because I've failed to learn from the mistakes that I have made. And, and we should be learning not just from our own mistakes, but from the mistakes that other people make as well. And I'm, I'm reminded of what Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 21, verse number 11. He said, when a scoffer is punished, the simple becomes wise. So you notice what's taking place here is you have these different groups of people you have a scoffer, you have the simple person, you have the wise person, and a, a scoffer just doesn't think about what he's doing, just does it and suffers the repercussions of it. You know, doesn't doesn't care if the cop is there. They're going to do 20 plus over and get pulled over, Lenita, <laughs> and get a $375 ticket oh, twice. Poor sister. Then you have the simple. Like the simple looks and sees what the scoffer does sees the repercussions of it and says, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. You have somebody who's learning from the mistakes of others. And there are situations in our life where we have to learn some hard lessons ourselves because we haven't learned it from somebody else, but at least we can learn the lesson from that. You're, you don't have to repeat it. A fool continues to repeat it. A simple person is somebody who just, you know what? They're unlearned. They haven't been in this situation before. They don't know better, but they look and they see somebody else suffer the consequence and say, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make that mistake because I don't want to have to pay that price. And it says that person becomes wise. And, and then it tells us what a wise person does in verse 11 there. When a wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. In other words, somebody just tells him what the situation is and he learns from that. He doesn't have to see a mistake. He doesn't have to see the example laid out in front of him. Somebody just tells him, hey, this is what you need to do. Avoid doing that. And, and he, he does it. That would be like some of our younger married couples who are listening to this podcast. And they are brand newly married. They really haven't had long enough to make too many mistakes. And you can listen to us being married 20 years as we share how bad we have like nagged or how poorly we've remembered to take out the trash. And they can say, oh, I'm going to make sure that I take out the trash for my wife. And wife is going to say, oh, I'm going to make sure I don't tag my husband. And they're going to learn from it. And they're not going to do what we did. And they are the wise people. Yeah, because your relationship is going to be so much better than ours. Yeah. You're not making the stupid mistakes we make. It's, exactly. And it causes the arguments and the distance and the disconnect Yeah. over stupid stuff. You know, so guys, things app. Just set yourself a little reminder. It's so simple. And yet it took me so long to learn it. <laughs> But you did, and I'm proud of you. Yeah. Um, one thing that's really interesting when we study the life of Abraham and Sarah, um, I, I really found this fascinating in verse 13. Um, so it's Genesis 20, 13. It says, and when God caused me to wonder from my father's house, so this is Abraham talking, I said to her, Sarah, this is the kindness you must do to me at every place to which we come. Say of me, he is my brother. So this was premeditated, you guys. Abraham had a plan that he was not going to turn away from. When he originally left his father's land and began to follow God into a land he did not know and did not know where he was going to end up, and they're sojourning through this land, um, the plan all along was to deceive people. The plan all along was to lie about their relationship and to say they weren't husband and wife. Yeah. Which, of course, was, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, on the podcast, that was Abraham um, really just all about self-preservation. Yep. He didn't care that Sarah was inevitably going to be taken as someone else's wife and probably raped and mistreated. 
all he cared about was that he would be okay. And he had such a lack of faith in God. God had told him, hey, you're going to get up. You're going to leave where you are. I'm going to take you into this land. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to make a great nation, which implies I'm going to get you there safely. I'm going to get your wife there safely. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to protect you, provide for you, watch out for you. And right from the very start, he shows a lack of faith yeah. by developing and coming up with this plan to make sure I'm okay. Right. And so even though we've only discussed two times where they didn't learn from the mistake, the truth is they had been doing this the entire journey. Everywhere they've gone. We have no idea how many times that was. Right. Or how many times she was taken as another man's wife or how many times she was in danger or whatever. We literally don't know. It's just crazy to think about that. And um, that, that was really the first time that hit me is when we were going through this passage just as we prepared for this. But sometimes you do premeditate mistakes where we're yeah. like okay i know this is wrong but this is what we're going to do in our marriage and you know some of the mistakes that we make seem so unimportant like i'm not going to talk to my husband about this even though i know he should know i'm not going to tell him that's premeditated mistakes yeah and we got to learn from those rather than just keep on going with that well and sometimes we really feel like we're doing the right thing right there's no doubt in my mind that Abraham feels like he's doing the right thing to accomplish what God said he would accomplish. Um, and sometimes we feel like we're doing relationally, hey, it's the right thing for me to not tell my wife about this certain situation because, you know, I want to protect her. I don't want her to worry. Mm -hmm. I don't want her to stress over her finances. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to like keep back some information from her. That may feel like the right thing to do. You may have thought in your mind just like Abraham, I thought that it's the right thing to do. Listen, it's not the right thing to do. Right. So it's not always like, I know this is wrong, but I'm doing it. Sometimes it literally is. We think we're doing the right thing when we're just not. Yeah. Wrong is always wrong. Um, but I mean, Abraham had made this plan when they left his father's land into the promised land. He had this plan every place they were going to come. And it's fascinating to me that even though this plan was a terrible plan and it went bad over and over again, he wasn't going to change the plan. You're right. Like yeah. he kept on going and following the plan. Yeah. And so one thing that we want to kind of mention today is um, even though you have a plan, it might be time to veer away from your plan. Reevaluate. The plan might not be good. And let me tell you what, I love a good plan. You know, I love planning so much. I love a bad plan. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a plan, I'm okay. I just have to know the plan. And um, so I know there's a lot of planners out there and you who are listening. You're like, oh, yes, the plan. Give me the schedule. Give me the calendar. Give me the um, list. Give me the alarm to make sure that I check the list. Like all of the plan. Love the plan. But listen, if it's a bad plan, disregard the plan. Reevaluate and make a new plan. <laughs> um. It is, it is fascinating because when I married Thomas, he is not a planner. I, no. And I knew that. Yeah. Um, you hate planning. You like everything to be spontaneous. But I would say that you have come more over toward the side of planning than you ever have been before. Like now you are more of a planner because of my influence. Yeah. And I'm more spontaneous because of your influence. We actually have a podcast episode on spontaneity. And, uh, and, and that was kind of an interesting one where we shared the, the differences in both of us. Um, but listen, you make a plan and that's great. And you've got the plan, but circumstances change, situations change, people change. And it is unwise for us to not ever reevaluate the plan. And I think about yeah. some people who are like in their twenties, they've made this plan of what they're going to do in their retirement years and the retirement years get there and they decide they're going to keep following the plan, even though neither of them really even want that plan anymore. You know, that's just one example. Well, and it reminds me of a conversation we had with some friends of ours who they had had this this plan in their minds of what they were going to do for years and years and years and years. And they just kind of continued along the plan, even though life had changed, circumstances had changed, their own feelings about things had changed. And they never really stopped to just reevaluate whether they should continue with the plan or not. Uh, there's nothing wrong with planning. Uh, we, we ought to plan, especially certain areas of our life um, and certain things in our life. Like the scripture talks about that a lot, making sure you plan financially. It has a lot to say about things like that. Um, but they just, they just continued on with the plan until they found themselves in a situation where, you know what, this is not really what we want anymore. 
Well, it was, I would say it's even more serious than that. They were miserable. Yeah. Like totally miserable. Yeah. So, um, he, here with Abraham, he should have reevaluated the plan. Like after the, this time with Pharaoh, um, what is it? Genesis chapter number 12. Mm Mm-hmm. When things didn't work out right, you know, they had developed this plan some time ago. When things didn't work out right, they should have came up with a new plan. All right. Next time we go into the land, this is what we're going to say. Like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to tell the truth. Yeah. Um, the original plan was not good. So what we need to do is we need to re- reevaluate. Um, and maybe there's a situation where you're trying to work out a plan right now. And you've you've chosen a certain path and maybe it's maybe it is destructive maybe it's unhealthy or maybe you know what it's just not the best plan anymore like we have grown we've matured we've changed circumstances have changed and it's just not the best plan anymore but here we are we're trying to force it we're trying to charge down that road even though that's not the road we should walk anymore and if that's the case for you it's time to change the plan It's time to seek the face of God and make a new plan. And one of the things you see in the life of Abraham and Sarah, especially in this circumstance, is they never seek God about the plan. They never ask God what they should do in these scenarios. It's always, this is what the plan was, so this is what we're going to do. And it reminds me of what Proverbs 14, 12 says. There is a way that seems right to a man, but but its end is the way to death. And there's just things in life that we think, hey, this is the right thing to do. And we've talked about that already. Like, like, oh, it, it just seems like the right thing to do because X, Y, and Z. And even though we think it's right, that doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Like, what does God have to say about it? And, hey, this is the plan, so we just kind of follow along. No, that's not necessarily what we need to be doing. Um, just a couple of verses later, in verse number 16 in Proverbs 14, it says, One who is wise is cautious. And turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and careless. And you get this, get this picture. I picture this idea of driving down the road and you're driving down the road and there's some danger. There's some obstructions or whatever else that has happened. And it says, Hey, a wise person sees that. And then they decide, you know what? I'm not going this way. Like I'm turning around. I'm going back a different direction. I'm going to find a different route because this is not the best plan anymore. But it says, a fool, they're reckless and careless. In other words, they just continue on, and they don't consider the course. They don't consider what has changed or what has happened. We just keep plowing through, and that's what Abraham and Sarah did. This was the plan that we had originated. Well, probably he originated. I doubt she she was like, hey, <laughs> that's a great idea. That was a man's plan. For sure. And um, But this is the plan, so we're just going to continue with it, even though it's never worked out good. That's right. One thing, though, that I love about the Bible is we see the character of God in every book. And even in this story, we are seeing the character of God. Um, In Genesis 12 and here in Genesis 20, we see God protecting Sarah. Um, He sends plagues to Pharaoh and his household. That happens in chapter 12. And here in chapter 20, we find that um, God closes up all the wombs of Abimelech and his household and in the land. And then he also does not allow Abimelech to touch her. And this is all done to protect Sarah. And the yeah. reason that God did this was to send a message to this to these men that they, they better not even touch Sarah because Sarah is in covenant with me. She is mine, my child. God was protecting her when her own husband wouldn't. And one thing that we can learn to this from this is you may be married to someone who cannot learn from their mistakes. Yeah. Got they it. might be a slow learner like me. Yeah. And that is frustrating. And I'm not trying to downplay how horrible that kind of life is when you are married to someone who just keeps making the same mistake over and over and over. No matter how many times you talk to them about it, no matter how many times someone else warns them, no matter how many times it goes bad, they are continuing to make the same mistake and you're connected to them. You're yeah. married with them to them. And it is awful. And I am sorry. But I do want to encourage you with this. God is still with you. God will take care of you. Abraham refused to learn from his mistakes, change his plan, and start being a husband who protected his wife. But look at Sarah. She's okay. Yeah. She got, God stepped in when her husband wouldn't. And I want to encourage you that God's got you too. If your spouse keeps making bad decision after bad decision, you don't have to fear because God has you. 
Yeah, and we understand it, it would be very difficult to live with someone yeah. who just repeatedly makes unwise financial decisions. That reminds me of a couple that we were counseling, and they had some financial things, and we were helping them to work through the issues that they had had. They made a lot of poor financial decisions. Um, and so we, we kind of developed a plan for them, let them know, hey, this is you follow these steps and go this direction, and you'll get yourself out of this situation. But he just he just kept making stupid mistakes, like stupid decisions, financial decisions. He would go out and every time he turned around, one time he just came home with a brand new truck, decided he was going to trade in what they had and get a brand new truck and up the payments. And when they had no money to pay for it, so I'm thinking about I'm 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 thinking of this wife mm -hmm. who her, her her she wants to get out of this situation that they're in. And get out from underneath this crushing stress and debt of this financial situation. And he just keeps, you know, making stupid decisions. Spending money they didn't have. And that's tough. And maybe maybe it's not financial stuff. Maybe it's somebody who can't control their mouth. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's somebody who loses their job frequently. Maybe it's somebody who just refuses to change the plan when that plan isn't working. And it it's, might be time to have some tough conversations. But in the process, I just want to tell you, trust God to protect you. The whole reason these problems were happening in the first place was because especially Abraham wasn't trusting God to protect him, to protect his family, to follow through on what he said he would do. So I want to encourage you, if you're in this situation, listen, just trust God to protect you. He, he protected Sarah. He kept her safe when Abraham wouldn't. Just keep trusting him. And if you're the one who keeps making the stupid mistakes, just repeating the same patterns, it's time to stop. Don't be the person that does this to your spouse. Don't be the person who can't learn from mistakes. And then you're dragging your spouse along with you through these terrible decisions and all the repercussions and everything else. Listen, you're destroying your marriage and your home. And I want to encourage you to have a family meeting tonight and just have some have some discussions about past mistakes or maybe it's current mistakes. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some things that are just going on and it's like, listen, man, we need to we need to do something different. Like we keep making the same stupid financial decisions. We keep getting ourselves into credit card debt. We keep getting ourselves overwhelmed with these car payments and all this stuff. Listen, we need to do something different. Learn from the mistakes. Maybe it's relational issues. And man, the way that you communicate is not healthy and you just keep recycling and you wonder why can't we work through these situations? Why aren't why isn't our relationship getting better? Why aren't we growing closer together? It's because you're making the same relational mistakes. It's time to do something different. So having those conversations tonight that you need to have about the mistakes, about what it's costed, and then come together to develop a plan. How are we going to do something different? Thanks so much for joining us today. Please go and subscribe to the Family Meeting from podcast from your favorite podcast provider. And if you found this information to be helpful, please share this episode on social media and invite your friends and family to listen in with you. To find more content and information Lysander and I provide, you can go to our website, familymeeting.org, or email us at info at familymeeting.org. If you'd like to shoot us a text or call us, you can send a voice message at 904 257 3062. And we want to invite you to join us for our next family meeting. Next week, we are going to see the damage that a lack of mercy can do to your family. And so we are going to be talking about being merciless. Continuing this look at Abraham and Sarah's relationship and learning the lessons from them. Thank you for joining us today for this family meeting. Have a great week, everybody. This meeting is adjourned. Well done, lover. All right. Well, guys, thanks for joining us today. We're glad that you have watched. You are the only people who get to see us yawn on camera. The behind the scenes, <laughs> all the interesting things that happen. Um, as you were watching, you probably saw me do this like five or six times. I went to grab my water. 
but I had moved my water out of the way when we took the picture that becomes the thumbnail because I we we didn't have a photographer here. Our photographer, which is our daughter, is staying at grandparents' house. So I had to set the timer, and it has 10 seconds. So I had to run from there, get in my seat, and do my thing. So I was like, I better move that just in case I knock it and ruin equipment that's down over here. So the whole time we're recording, I'm like reaching down to get a drink of water. And it's not, I'm like, oh, it's not there. Oh, it's not there. I would have shared my water with you because I have my water over here. Yeah, but yours is loud to move around with the ice and all that stuff in it. So that's not that loud. It is. Okay. Um, so you, <laughs> you, you see the behind the scenes. We, we take the filters off for you and you see everything that happens. The craziness that happens over here. Yeah. Oh. So we, we love yeah. the time that we get to spend with you. Um, but now that time is over because we have stuff to do. Yes, and so do you. But we will meet back here next week. So have a great week, everybody. We'll see you later.